Okay, um, for, for our next uh, session, we'll talk about L2PI, which you've heard about uh, quite a bit uh, today, <laughs> yesterday. So Casper uh, uh, and Amir will tell us the details. Right, hello, uh, my name is Casper. Uh, I'm principal engineer at Intel, um, together here with Munir. Yeah, hi, this is Munir Ahmad. I'm from Lattice uh, Semiconductor. Thank you. All right, so today we will provide you with some updates on the LTPI specification, which is a part of the DCSCM specification uh, that uh, Chan uh, that just walked you through. Uh, we will provide you with some major updates in the comparing to the last update that we had last year, uh, and we will also talk some uh, provide you the information about the availability of the reference implementations. Uh, that <coughs> both Intel and Lattice supports. Uh, and we will give you an overview of the demos that we showed uh, in the Expo Hall, but it's already closed, so <laughs> you won't be able to see it if you didn't see that. Um, all right, so uh, it didn't work. Uh, okay, so the what LTPI is, probably most of you know as you came here, um, but this is the LVDA standarding protocol and interface. Uh, that's the abbreviation. Uh, uh, it substitutes the uh, serial, two serial GPO interfaces from the DCSCM 1.0. Uh, and what it is actually, it's a more flexible or more optimal use of the same pins, right? In, if you look at the DCSCM 1.0, uh, you had nine pins dedicated to two serial GPIO interfaces. Uh, and what we did, we, we used eight of them uh, instead uh, of nine, and we put an LV, two LVDS links uh, on those pins that are just much more capable, much more flexible, uh, can uh, Tunnel uh, not only GPIOs, uh, but also UART, I2C interfaces, data channels, so you can use it for all sorts of different purposes, not only for GPIOs. And this way, we think it it, it will provide some way of uh, you know uh, um, growth and uh, a place for growth for the DCSCM 2.0 specification. Uh, so now on the changes um, that we implemented throughout the you know uh, 2021, 2022, comparing to the previous uh, um, updates that we provided, uh, we published 0.7 version of the spec, and then we uh, got a lot of feedback from the community, from the working group uh, within the DCSCM, but also through the mailing list that Chen. Uh, just mentioned, and we focused on uh, various aspects of the LTPI specification to apply all sorts of improvement and uh, implement uh, those uh, or define those new features that were requested. And this is mostly about improving the reliability of this interface, uh, especially within the training flow or, or the uh, SMBAS channels uh, that we applied in the spec and we uh, extended the spec with, uh, with that. Uh, we also extended the spec with some uh, extensive, uh, you know, the description of the uh, the way the UARDs, the SM buses, uh, are uh, being tunneled over the LTPI, so that um, uh, everyone can just take it and implement it this way. Uh, and we also added some more flexibility to the spec to uh, allow implementers to uh, uh, to implement. Uh, the additional capabilities, the customizations, basically, uh, that will let you uh, customize LTPI uh, to a specific uh, use case. So instead of if you if you need uh, just only GPIOs that are uh, that have a very low latency, you can do that with uh, following the spec definitions. Uh, the the biggest updates came came to the training flow. Uh, we improved the training flow to. To make it more robust, uh, we define the the frame alignment stages that are necessary in order to catch up uh, in the in the training flow. Uh, how it goes, how it changes the frames uh, from uh, from the uh, you know uh, one frame to another, uh, and both sides are uh, are uh, kept in line. Uh, we uh, addressed potential deadlocks that were pointed out through, throughout those uh, 0.7 reviews, uh, and we implemented uh, 
uh, those new stages um, that you can see on the uh, on the flow diagram that I'll call uh, link detect, uh, frame alignment, and advertise frame alignment to, to mitigate for that. Uh, um, we also added multiple possibilities to uh, uh, in, uh, to um, force the retraining flow from the BMC perspective. So in in LTPI, uh, the BMC is still the like the um, controller of the of the interface. BMC has the powers to retrain, to modify the configuration, uh, to 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 restart uh, the whole interface. Um, we also added uh, multiple extensions to the error handling chapters uh, because uh, that was also part of that uh, uh, feedback that we got. So we defined the CRC errors uh, handling and how it can affect different channels within the LTPI. Uh, so now let me hand it over to Munir, uh, as Munir sure. uh, can cover the, the uh, uh, specifics of I2C and SMBAS uh, improvements. So, hi, yeah, hi, thanks, Casper. So some of the things that uh, uh, I think we added in the spec uh, is just an improvement about how we are gonna handle the I2C bus and SMBAS event. So previously, I think we were sending the SMBUS event, but this time, what is added is we're going to send events continuously. Uh, previously, it's once per event, and then what? If you look at here, I think this is a two PG chart to explain, you know. Uh, but what is added is that uh, you have an eco events to confirm the reception and processing of I2C events, right? So it's in from HPM to SCM when the data sends, and there is eco event back to the HPM again to see yes, and then also back to SCM again, that yes, that HPM understand your request, so HPM, SCM also understand the request. So that's one of the thing that is added, and this is basically uh, for I2C event, uh, you know, there could be some kind of event frame loss or something, but this is confirming that, you know, we don't have that issue. So that's one of the things that we added. And also when you have, we added the whole data receipt equal event to differentiate if you have a multiple subsequent data events that is also added in this frame. So the chart is still pretty busy here, but you can see the red event is, uh, which is the data received eco event. So that tells that the, you know, the, you, can, you can actually process the next, next uh, data event. And also you can see this green one, which is shares that on a SCM that, uh, that yes, uh, we're receiving, HPM is confirming that, HPM is sending back again to the SCM that yes, uh, SCM also understand that yes, HPM you know, wants to start, you know, can send the next event. So that's the major changes that we have that basically is supposed to improve the, you know, any kind of I2C reliability issues, SMBUS reliability issues. This is supposed to, you know, handle of that. You know, that's the, you know, and in the, in the number of frame event that, you know, we start sending more and more. I, I think in the previous day in 0 0.7, I believe there was a seven frames, right? The seven frames event that was an accepted state, and sometimes when you run about uh, 400 megahertz DDR speed, right, it takes about two events just to um, just to parse the event. So, by the time you're all done and set, it takes at least six event. You know, just the minimum that you need. So we we increase that number significantly. So that's some of the changes that we did. Okay, let's go to the next slide. All right. So. Um since the beginning of the LTPI proposal, we were getting those type of requests that um, in, in order to you know, re enable this interface, the CPLD vendors need to support this as on, on their devices, right? And Intel, from the very beginning, we committed to deliver the LTPI reference implementation to contribute that, that to OCP. Uh, and this is what you could see in, uh, in the uh, Experience Center demo. Uh, we showed the fully compliant implementation that is actually this reference implementation. And we are going through the formal processes of just contributing that on the GitHub. This will be an RTL source code. Uh, uh, fully available with test benches and case, test cases that we will uh, contribute so that anyone can pick it up and uh, uh, use it on their implementation. And uh, similarly, Lattice, uh, Munir will cover what Lattice supports. Sure, so Lattice said yes, we did the full implementation of LTPI 1.0. It says 0.97, but actually it's 1.0 implementation that we did. We, and now this is right now we did on uh, XO3 base, but there's multiple products in the pipeline that's gonna support that you know, LTPA 1.0 full spec, uh, you, you know, realization on the parts. We do have the reference design user guide, IP user guide, that's an definitely available for all of them, but I think we're all tied to this, you know, on open compute uh, OCP side, and then we are basically dedicated to that. 
Uh, we have some of the other parts, the newer parts is also in the process to have this LTP implementation. Uh, I think we also, the goal is that we're also doing uh, some of the other LTP you know, vendors to see that, you know, truly if you look at OCP, it's, it has to be working with the multiple vendors because it's supposed to be an instant interface, right? So we started testing on that as well. Okay. So, next slide. Uh -huh. Yeah, in the slide we just showed the uh, pictures of the demos that we just showed here, a fully working LTPI implementation from Intel and uh, Lattes. And call to action. Yep, so uh, I think uh, we have demo, right? Intel has demo and we have demos in multiple locations. Uh, uh, you know, that's so, you know, Phil, I know it's a close, so I don't think we can look at, but yeah. we, we don't know that we might be the last one in the presentation, right? So anyway. Uh, if you saw it, it's great, uh, but uh, this is the demos there, Intel has that, we have it, and multiple other companies has that as well. So definitely that's the one of the thing. Uh, if you are interested in the spec and development, and other, you know, I think there's the hardware management team, as in Tim Lambert says, and also the Casper is there. Yeah, we encourage you to look at the spec. It's uh, completely separate spec, and we've been hearing that it might be, uh, you know, suitable for other uh, OCP applications as well, so go ahead and contact us. We will be happy to help you with, uh, you know, defining those use cases. Thank you. Thank you. Any question? Any question? We have time for one question, if possible. Two-part question. I2C clock stretching and is I3C bus on the roadmap? You want to take it? Yeah. yeah so, um, so, so, so the, um, yeah, so the uh, clock stretching is used as a as a solution in LTPI to tunnel the I square C interfaces, right? So it's a it's a baseline uh, for 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 how we are tunneling because uh, we are using the um, uh, clock stretching uh, to compensate for the turnaround time before uh, we get back the event from the other side, right? So that's uh, that's how we do that. And this is already in the reference implementations and it, it needs to be. It, uh, <laughs> it's the way it works, right? So fully supported by Lattice and Intel. Uh, if, if that was the question, because I didn't get that <laughs> quite clearly. That's fine, we can talk offline. I think C basic is uh, gaining momentum in different types of interfaces coming and it would be beneficial if it could make it into the roadmap at some point. Oh, I see. Yeah, I think, uh, let's talk offline. Sure, I yeah, think why don't we move this offline? So, yep. can, can we thank our speakers? <laughs>